In the last lecture, we created our very first React project. Now, let's go ahead and let's understand the use of each files and folders which we have in this project. In this project, the first folder which we have is this node modules folder. It is this folder inside which all the third party libraries as well as React itself will be stored. And while deploying this React application, this folder will not be deployed in the production. As a developer, we are not going to do much inside this node modules folder. So we never have to touch this folder. After this node modules folder, we have this public folder. And inside this public folder, we have all our public assets. For example, this favorite icon as well as this index.html file. Now, if we have a look on this index.html file, this is a very simple HTML with a bunch of meta tags as well as links. So for example, here we have a link to fav icon. Then here we have a link to manifest.json. So we have this fav icon here inside this public folder. And we also have this manifest.json file. Now this manifest.json file includes a bunch of metadata about our application. Again, we don't have to worry about it. Apart from that, in this public folder, we have some images and this text file. After this public folder, we have this source folder. And this is one important folder because it is this folder inside which as a developer, we will be working the most. Inside this source folder, we have this app.js file. And this app.js file is a component file. We call it as app component. And it is this component file which is responsible for rendering this UI in the web page. So the output of that app component, that app.js file is what you see here. Let's have a quick look on this app.js file. In this file, we have a JavaScript function. We are calling it app. And from within this function, we are returning some markup. Now, if you have a basic knowledge of JavaScript, then you know that in a JavaScript code, we cannot write HTML like this. And if you notice this HTML, this markup is not within quotes as well. So this is not a string here and neither it is HTML. This markup, which you see here is called as JSX, which stands for JavaScript XML. So we use this syntax, which looks very similar to HTML to describe what the UI is going to look like for the React application. And this markup here is responsible for this output. So if you notice in this markup, first we are displaying the logo image. Then we have this text. So this text, and then we are displaying a hyperlink. And that's what you will see in the output. We have this logo, we have this paragraph, this text, and then we have this hyperlink. So this app.js is responsible for displaying the output which you see currently in the browser. Now, as I mentioned, this markup which you see here, it is not HTML. It is something called as JSX, JavaScript XML. And browsers does not understand JSX. So to make this code work, we have to pass this code through Babel, which is a modern JavaScript compiler. And Babel will take this JSX syntax and it will convert it to plain JavaScript so that browsers can also understand it. So for example, if I copy this JSX code here and let's head over to babeljs.io slash REPL. And here, let's type this JSX code. So in the left side, we have JSX code. And in the right side, you can see the JavaScript version of that JSX code. So this all code, which you see here is plain JavaScript. So Babel is responsible for converting the JSX code into plain JavaScript, which browsers can understand. And what is Babel? Babel is a modern JavaScript compiler. Here, let's take a simple example. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some modern JavaScript code. So I'm going to create a constant using this const keyword. I will call it element. And to this, I'm going to assign some JSX expression. So here I'm going to create an H1 element. Let's also include a closing H1. Okay. And inside this H1 element, I am going to specify some text. Let's say, hello world. Okay. So for this JSX, you can see this is the JavaScript code. And in this JavaScript code, you can see 
a call to create element method of this react object and this create element method takes few arguments the first argument is the element which we want to create and this third argument is the value which we want to have in between the elements and we are going to learn more about this create element method in the coming lectures all right let's go back to our vs code so this app.js is the app component and from within this app component we are returning some jsx code then we also have this app.css which is a css file and this file includes all the css for the app component that means for this app.js file and here you will also notice that we are importing this app.css file in this app.js file so for example for this div we are specifying a class name called app and if i go to app.css here for that app for that css class we are specifying some css properties in the same way here we also have this app logo so for this css class also we are specifying some css styles okay so basically this app.css file contains the css styles for this app.js then we also have a test file which is app.test.js inside this test file you can write the automated tests for the app component but for now we are not going to worry about testing the components after that we also have this index.js file and this index.js file is the entry point of our react application now don't worry about this code which you see here because we are going to write this code from scratch in our next lecture and at that time you will understand what we are trying to do inside this index.js file but remember that index.js file is the entry point of a react application then for this index.js file we also have this index.css file and inside this index.css file we specify the css styles for our entire react application so if you want to write some css styles which should be applicable for all the components in the react application then you can write that css style inside this index.css file then we also have this logo.svg which is the logo file of the application then we also have this report web vitals.js file this is a built-in tool for measuring the real life performance of your react application it measures a set of metrics that aims to capture the user experience of a web page for now we are not going to worry about this file then we also have this setup test.js file this file we basically use for testing our react application but let's not worry about testing for now and finally the most important file here is this package.json file this package.json is a standard configuration file which every node project has and it contains configuration related to the react applications for example it has the name of the project the version of the project what are the dependencies which we have for this project and there are other configurations as well so if you want to change some configuration for your project or if you want to add some new configurations in your project then you need to come to this file but most of the time we don't touch this file this file gets automatically updated whenever we install a new package in our project or whenever we uninstall an existing package from our project in the next lecture we are going to modify our existing react application and we are going to write the react code from scratch